exploration. So the science is cut and dry with the IPCC. That's what this is based on. Well, he's not so sure. Of yeah, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't trust the United Nations. Every single person I talk to who works for them, you scratch the surface. All they say is how irredeemably corrupt the organisation. Is. So they don't do the science. They collate it. Ah. Oh. Right. The so they, they don't. They don't collect the votes. They just count the votes. Okay. So the first half of the workshop is based on, on, the, on the ARDS and the IPCC reports. And then the second half is explorative. If you want to go into possible solutions or other ways you know, to do it and look at your feelings and you know how you respond to the knowledge of what this is. Um, I'd recommend an app for you if you want to look into it. It's called uh, Skeptical Science. Uh, it's called Cranky Uncle. And it's uh, about how to talk to like people who deny climate science. Can I? Can all, all of the uh, methods that they use is very interesting to me. Can I ask you guys? Um, I've been talking about 15-minute cities a lot today, so I was wondering if I could get your opinion on that. Do you guys support the 15-minute cities that are coming in? Uh, 15 minutes now. 15-minute cities all over all over London, all over the country. Um, I don't know an awful lot. I think all over the country. I think there's Oxford yeah. so far. 30 councils have signed up to it. 30. 30. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's big thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's supposed to be a trial. Have people living and working in the, where you know one place. Well, what so you not, support? Do you support 15 minute cities roughly? I just wanted to know if you did. I think it's not a bad idea to not have to travel for an hour and a half to go to work every day. I think for people's mental health and for the good of you know air pollution and all the rest of it, I think that's probably not a bad thing. Yeah, I think it's a really bad thing. I live in a 15-minute city myself, a low-traffic neighbourhood in uh, Bounds Green. It's the same thing, low-traffic neighbourhood as 15-minute cities. And uh, these not preventing you from going outside your area, which is what a lot of people seem to be saying. If I could just tell you why I don't like it. Um, they've got roadblocks up with uh, some green plants put on top, and they say that this is making them green, that they're attractive, that they're nice, that they're reclaim, that they're... Excuse me. Again, you've interrupted me. Um, they're basically saying that they're reclaiming the streets for the kids and that they're making air pollution better. But of course, when you block roads with roadblocks, the traffic just has to filter around the side of those roads and creates traffic jams and creates traffic jams. I'm not going to stop. And create traffic jams, which creates more pollution. I asked you your opinion and then I wanted to tell you mine, but you keep interrupting me all the time. How can you, how can you create less pollution by creating more traffic jams? Because you encourage people public transport and active. But there's the same amount of cars, there's the same amount of people, but they're in the car an hour longer every day. They're on a bicycle. No, 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 these families are spending an hour extra in their cars to take their children to school. Well, then they should take them on a bicycle. Well, families of five should ride bikes everywhere all the time. Let's see what a foster mum at a 15-minute city's protest in Wood Green has to say about the bicycle solution. Having to get up an hour earlier, which means they're losing an hour of quality time with their kids. Breakfast is now rushed, it's eating in the car. Yeah, they can't all afford bikes. They haven't got storage. You're in Broadwater Farm, you can't store free bikes for your free kids. And if you leave them out, they're going to get stolen. Yeah, it's not practical for parents with large groups of children. There should have been bike lockers at all stations because you want us to ride bikes. We live in Tottenham. We all know bikes get stolen. You can't ride a bike in Tottenham unless you're staying, keeping it with you at all times. Why do we not have a bike shelter with man security in Turn Park Lane Station before the LTNs come into play? You want us to ride bikes? Make our bikes safe to be stored within Tottenham. This is not okay. There are so many people being affected, and I hear the post constantly saying, drivers this, drivers that. It's not about the drivers, this is about people's lives, and I keep saying it, and they're not listening. Moving a bit to the side because your parents are going to That's crazy, there's more pollution now. There's more pollution now, not less. Did you see that, Shrug? She doesn't care. What she really wants to say there is that there will be less pollution once we drive the cars off the face of the earth through our fascistic policies. What I really want to say is that you're not a scientist. You're a fairground sideshow clown at a watered down Rothschild ball. A boring bacchanal for all the family. Should children even be brought here considering the doomsday scenarios that they're propagandized with? And slow-moving pollution is more harmful to people anyway. Can, can move a bit to the it side? doesn't make any sense. Thank you. And ambulances can't get to the people who are sick and dying well, in the roads. We need to improve the road system, don't we? 
Well, no, you need to get the roadblocks out of the road so that massive vans called so ambulances can actually get there. The ambulance, I said. I'm air talking air about ambulances and you're ignoring it. Why are you ignoring well, the ambulance? ambulance? Can I tell someone that ambulances can no longer reach the sick and dying in these neighbourhoods? And they don't even flinch and just carry on saying what they were always saying and ignoring what I've said to them? That's when I know I'm talking to an ideal. The ambulance. They can't get to people. How many people die from air pollution a year? Can everybody stop touching me? Don't touch me. Don't touch me, gorilla. This is a freedom of information request showing that the number of deaths caused by air pollution between 2001 and 2022 was actually just one. Yeah. One. Oxford did their own analysis of pollution levels showing that between the months of January and March 2022, the levels had in fact risen and exceeded the legal annual average limit now. It should be under pressure publicly all the time given the devastation to human existence that is being carried out in their name. But unfortunately, most people just defer to scientists, which means they go unchallenged. These well-meaning but brainwashed people look at our beautiful and yet dwindling population and think, yeah, we need less of this. They'll stand amidst the ruins of our civilization that they destroyed in order to save the world. Amidst all the death, redundancy and carnage of totalitarian existence and think, yeah, sure is a shame, but we were right though. It had to be done. Science said so. I mean, those pollution numbers alone. I mean, geez, they were really scary. Look at what the panda said in part one. Where are you going to use science? Various studies, I don't know, man. YouTube, YouTube videos, maybe? Who do, you, who do you follow? I don't really get my, that kind of like stuff from YouTube. So it's just in your head? Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the science and the actual data. I'm not just supposed to accept the science. If you're too accepting of the science, you are no scientist. Unfortunately, the concept of the science has been battered rather considerably recently, right? By world events, by COVID, by a whole bunch of things. Just saying the science is not the magic panacea that it used to be. Hiya, please like, share and subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for my upcoming channel of the director's gut. Lyme's disease and SIBO are threatening my speech, so I'm writing an evolving health guide and asking for donations in order to fund treatment. The links are below. Cheers!